Hello and welcome to this third video in a series on nitrogen chemistry aimed at National 5 level. OK, what have we covered so far? You should be aware that nitrogen compounds are essential for plant growth. And these are often contained in artificial fertilisers. There are natural fertilisers, but we've been looking at the artificial ones. And these artificial fertilisers usually contain nitrogen in the form of nitrates. These nitrates can be made by neutralising nitric acid. And what we're going to be looking at in this video is how we make that nitric acid. You should also be aware, though, that soluble non-metal oxides dissolve in water to form acid. This is something we covered a while back. Soluble non-metal oxides dissolve in water to form acids. OK, we're going to start with ammonia gas. Now, we've not come across ammonia before, so I need to tell you what ammonia is. Ammonia is nitrogen hydride. A nitrogen atom with three hydrogens attached, NH3. That's ammonia. An interesting thing about ammonia is that it's an alkaline gas. Let me explain how that works. Let's bring in a water molecule. OK, so you've got a water molecule, you've got an ammonia molecule. Now what can happen here is that one of those hydrogens from the water can transfer to the nitrogen like that. And that produces a thing called an ammonium ion in the lower left and a hydroxide ion in the upper right, the, that OH-. Now you may remember, of course, any solution with OH- in, any soluble hydroxide, is an alkali. So as soon as you've got OH- in a solution, you've got an alkali. This then is the process. Ammonia gas reacts with water to produce ammonium hydroxide. Now notice that double-headed arrow, it means this reaction works both ways. We will want that again in a later video. For the moment though, notice ammonia is an alkaline gas. It dissolves in water to form an alkali. Now we can use this as a test for ammonia. Let's bring in a test tube of ammonia. Get a damp piece of pH paper. And because ammonia is an alkaline gas, the damp pH paper will turn blue. Not that you need much of a test for ammonia. Ammonia has a strong, pungent smell that once you've smelt it, you will never forget. But this is the standard test for ammonia. Notice ammonia when you're talking about the gas there, the molecule ammonia. Compare that with ammonium in ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium is a positive ion. You never see ammonium by itself. Only ammonium chloride, ammonium hydroxide, ammonium nitrate, always as part of a compound. OK, so let's move on to the Ostwald process. And at its heart, this involves reacting ammonia with oxygen. Okay, so let's get a reaction vessel in here like that. Now the key thing here is ammonia and oxygen don't easily react together. You've got to get them really hot. And you need a catalyst. In this case, platinum gauze. So that's a gauze made of platinum. And you get that really hot. Okay, and you bring in your ammonia and oxygen. Now, once this reaction happens, the reaction itself is highly exothermic. It will release a lot of heat. And when it does, it produces water and nitrogen monoxide. Now, notice this reaction is highly exothermic. It releases a lot of heat. Once you've got this reaction going, you don't have to keep heating it up. The heat from the reaction itself will keep the reaction going. OK. We're going to take that nitrogen monoxide now and send it off to a second reaction. Off it goes, like that. And what we're going to do now, we're going to oxidise that further. We're going to add more oxygen. It's actually just air that we put in. So when if we heat those two up, we get nitrogen dioxide. Notice you've gone from nitrogen monoxide to nitrogen 
dioxide. Now this is a non-metal oxide. Okay, so let's bring in a third stage. And what we're going to do, we're going to dissolve that nitrogen dioxide in water. So we'll spray in some water. Non-metal oxides dissolve to form acids. In this case, nitric acid. That leaves you notice with a nitrogen monoxide sitting upstairs there. We're not going to waste that. We're going to recycle that back to that chamber there. That then is the process. We'll go over that now with some equations. So this is the Oswald process. We're going to put down the equations. Incidentally, that there is Wilhelm Oswald. He's the guy who invented it. OK, the first stage then was the reaction of ammonia with oxygen. That looks like a scary equation. Don't worry, you're not going to have to repeat that in an exam or anything. OK, just know that you're reacting ammonia with oxygen. Now, this is done with a platinum catalyst, and it's a highly exothermic reaction. Yes, you have to heat it up to get it started, but once it's going, the heat from the reaction will keep it going. Okay, so you've produced nitrogen monoxide in that reaction. That get, then gets reacted with oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. Notice I haven't put any state symbols in here. But all these things are gases up to now. But what you now do, you dissolve that nitrogen dioxide in water and you get nitric acid and nitrogen monoxide gas. That nitrogen monoxide then is then recycled to the previous step. Okay, then this is our summary. We started by talking about ammonia, which is an alkaline gas. And the reason it's alkaline is it can form ammonium hydroxide with water. And hydroxides, remember, are alkalis. Then we looked at the Ostwald process, which was the started with the reaction of ammonia with oxygen to produce nitrogen monoxide. This needs a high temperature and a platinum catalyst, but it's also highly exothermic, so that heat released in the reaction will keep it going. You then react that nitrogen monoxide with oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide. You then add that to water to produce the nitric acid you want and nitrogen monoxide which is then recycled. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye just now.